Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Military Mondays. If we don't know each other, I am retired Major Brenda Sanchez, and I am also the co-founder of Life's Real Currency with my husband, Michael Sanchez, and we help businesses thrive, not just survive. And I bring you these Military Mondays every single Monday morning at 8 a.m. Mountain Time, like clockwork. Of course, uh, technology doesn't always cooperate and it's been saying only me a few times lately. So if you miss it, you can always catch the replay on my Facebook wall. But if we don't know each other, I would love to get to know you, especially if you are a veteran or currently serving or the spouse of a veteran and have a business. We'd love to have a conversation with you and see if you would be a good fit for my Military Mondays. But without further ado, I have an amazing um, gentleman here, Gary, and I met through a veterans networking group. That's how I meet a lot of my veteran um, business owners, and we do a lot of business together. And um, Gary and I met through VetNet, and he currently is a financial advisor with Thrivent Financial, which if I remember correctly, is a Christian-based um, financial uh, planning institution, right? Or company, what, however you want to say that. Yeah, we find our foundations within the Christian world, yes. Awesome. And um, Gary's also a former E5 in the Army. And so thank you for being on today, Gary. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you having me on today, Brenda. Uh, oh. I've always been super excited and I always liked to see in your interviews. So I'm happy to be on. Yeah, awesome. So let's talk a little bit about what you did in the service, and then we'll get around to what you're doing today. Okay. So um, I got in in 2006 as a fire support specialist, which is a field artillery observer. Um, I got in because I wanted cool stories, um, <laughs> not because I wanted a life, not because I wanted a civilian equivalent of jobs, which uh, there really isn't, which I... <laughs> which I thank God every day there isn't. Um, so in that, I, I became, a, I guess, went up to NCO and started training soldiers. Um, that's one thing that I've always enjoyed doing. Um, and in that process is um, helping them understand a complicated job. Um, it's not easy. Um, it's high stress and being able to be efficient in that area. Um, so that was, I would say my main, main job was protecting the guys that I was deployed with as well as training the people that were underneath me. Awesome. And you were in for six years, is that right? Yes. Awesome. And you had a few different assignments. So it wasn't just Colorado because this is where you did um, separate and settle down with your family, but you were where else? I was in Korea for my first duty station from 06 to 07. And then from 07 to 09, I was in uh, Fort Lewis, Washington, before it became Fort Lewis McCord Joint Air Force Base. Um, and then my warrant officer um, in Washington convinced me that Colorado or Fort Carson is heaven on earth. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, my window just opened. So I re-enlisted to come out to uh, Colorado, um, which I did find heaven on earth with my wife, but um, it, it's not the pretty place that I expected it to be, but it is, it is very beautiful. I was going to say, it's, it's a, as my mother used to say, it's just a different type of beautiful because yeah. I grew up in upstate New York and my mom would come here to visit and people would say, my mom would be like, oh my God, it's gorgeous here. And everybody would be like, where are you from? And they're like, up, she'd be <laughs> like upstate New York and they're like, you're crazy. And she's like, yeah. no, it's just a different beautiful. Yeah. So. <laughs> You got into the service for stories and adventure. Did you did you get that? Um, yeah, but that's for another time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, you know, when you got out, you and I had a conversation um, prior to this. And when you got out, you didn't get right into financial. Um, no. You went and did other things. So let's talk mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, so I've always felt my calling is to help people. Um, one of the part of going to be uh, getting the stories is I wanted to be a teacher. 
Um, but then I learned that I don't like homework and the teachers have to grade a lot of homework. So <laughs> I have a lot of respect for them, but it's not for me. Um, so my, my next goal on that was, hey, well, law enforcement. Law enforcement is normally the next step towards helping people outside of the military. So I went and worked with a Park County Sheriff's Department as a corrections officer up there. Um, and that was a, probably the best customer service experience you'll ever have. Um, because you, you, you can't not tell people no, but then you also have to go say hi to them, like in an hour. So it's not like the customer walks out and you'll never see him again, because you'll see him again in an hour. So, um, and then um, my wife was driven crazy because you're locked in about six months out of the year in fair play. So um, I started, we had a conversation of what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and I started my degree at that point in time in 2013 uh, for finance. Um, so uh, at that point in time, we're like, hey, we'll stay up here for five years and do that. Um, but God had a different plan for us. <laughs> and, he's, and my wife's like, I can't last five years. So um, we moved down here and I worked security at the Broadmoor for a year, um, which again, going from being able to work with people that are seen as like the lowest of the low to the highest of the high of the Broadmoor and being able to carry that customer service experience over. Um, after a year there, I, I started with Wells Fargo um, and we worked with them for about four and a half years um, until Thrivent became a bigger uh, option for me <laughs> with uh, graduating with my degree and uh, getting uh, licensed. So, yeah, it's been a, quite a journey. <laughs> so during that journey, what do you think the skills that you learned in the service um, you were able to take away and become successful in doing what you're doing today and own in your own business? I, uh, my biggest thing I would say is the ability to adapt how I communicate with people. Um, not everybody learns the same way. Not everybody understands the same concepts using the same words. Um, so understanding that if, if I'm seeing somebody struggle in a, in a spot, reverting myself back, not, not putting it on them because it's my fault for not communicating properly, but, and just coming back and saying, okay, well, let's, let's get to another point and help you understand what, what I'm talking about and why I, I'm, I'm trying to talk about it. So... Yeah. Um, I think through the military, uh, you have so many different people, so many different levels you have to talk to, whether you're talking to brand new Joe or you're talking to uh, your brigade commander, like, <laughs> you, you have to be able to communicate almost the same things, but at different levels. Um, and then again, going into law enforcement, being able to talk to the inmates at a level of being able to tell them no without them being upset at you. And then going to, so but I think that's one thing that all my experiences have really taught me is being able to communicate different ideas effectively. I was going to say, you've had a broad spectrum of clientele. We'll just put it that way <laughs> throughout your, throughout your life and your um, adult life and work life, um, yeah. which probably sets you up to uh, be way more compassionate when it comes to financial advising. So why Thrivent and how can you help families or uh, military or retirees today? Well, why Thrivent was really easy for me because uh, I was working for a company that did not share my morals. Um, and so my wife's high school teacher, Cheryl Mann, um, she is also an advisor with Thrivent. Um, and she said, hey, Gary, I know where your heart is at. You should go apply here with Thrivent. And I looked up the company and I said, okay, this is an amazing company. Um, it's been around since 1902. So it's not going anywhere. Um, and the fact that it's grounded in Christian belief started by a Lutheran pastor back in 1902, like that is amazing to me. Um, 
And so, it's just been nice to be able to have that support within my leadership and the fact that like my CEO prayed with us on the first day I started with the company. Like that's that's absolutely amazing to me. So cool. So you would say that part of your success today has to do with the relationships you've built over time because it was a relationship that introduced you, somebody you knew introduced you to Thrive In. A hundred percent. Um yeah. My relationship with my wife led me to the teacher who is now advisor, <laughs> which is yeah. Um, which we grew that we've grown that relationship a hundredfold since I've started. Um, um, so I've enjoyed that. Um, awesome. And there was a second part to that question about why I chose private and then how you help military families or retirees today. Yeah. So my favorite thing to do is help people transition in their lives. Um, military retirees, veterans, uh, soldiers getting out, things like that. Life changes a lot from uh, military to civilian life. Whether you're getting your military retirement or not, like there's, there's a lot of decisions people aren't talking to you about. Um, and so I like, again, through my communication skills, being able to uh, help them understand what each step is and why it's a good or bad decision in that process. Um, so while, in a way, you are an educator. You are I, I a am teacher. An educator. You just don't <laughs> have to do the homework and, <laughs> and grade the yeah. papers. <laughs> I, I do, I do uh, agree I am on the side of uh, communication and uh, teaching now. <laughs> <laughs> and my homework is being able to go through the spreadsheets and be able to figure out what's best for somebody. <laughs> so, and I love doing that. So I just don't want to do the same uh, essay on uh, Charlemagne and read it 30 times. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's different homework because it's different people, <laughs> D different exactly. scenario every time. Yeah. Awesome. No silver bullet. So it's <laughs> always something different. So it, you specialize kind of then in those, especially those that are transitioning out of the service, whether they're just separating or retiring, what piece of advice would you give somebody that's considering getting out or is getting ready to retire? Reach out to the resources that we have. <laughs> um, Colorado Springs has amazing resources here in town. Um, nationwide, there are tons of agencies out there to be able to help people getting out of the military. The reason why these agencies exist is because the military really does fail at helping their people transition out of the military. Um, and so don't, don't expect the military to take care of you when you're getting out. Be sure that you have your best interest and your family's best interest in reaching out to local professionals. Um, whether it's a, a financial advisor to talk over what the uh, SBP looks like for you as, as a family or what your retirement pay looks like and how is this gonna affect any area, your CPAs for uh, tax advice. Um, here in town, I'm gonna kind of do Mount Carmel, like reach out to them and help them and they'll be able to look for a positions for you and get you the Prep Connect 360 to be able to go through the, uh, uh, resume writing. So uh, reach out like this can be the busiest last year of your military. And it should be because you're setting yourself up for the rest of your life. So, and, and I would piggyback on that. If you're only a year out, you're behind the power curve. You really should start planning three to five years out. So, you know, you need those connections, those relationships, like Gary said, reach out to the services but there are also veteran networking groups and with the state of the world right now, everything yeah. is online. And so if you're not in Colorado Springs, you can still be a part of the veteran networking that happens in Colorado Springs because of it all being virtual and online. And we are, we, our group here in Colorado Springs has grown across 
um, at least across the US. I don't know that we've had anybody out of the country yet, um, but we would love to have you. And um, yeah. we'll post down below in the comments, we'll post a link to the veteran networking group that you can get yeah. tied in. And I'm sure that Gary would love to have a conversation with you and help you with the transition. I would be glad to have a conversation with you. Mm -hmm. um, so any last words of wisdom or anything that we didn't talk about that you wanted to talk about, Gary? No, you do a pretty good job in the interview process. I, I Again, I think a lot of people are afraid of uh, reaching out and asking for help at this point in time. You've, you've been in the military for 15 years or so. So yeah, it, it, it's not something that you've always been taught to do, but this is the time to really do it and to really step into that, uh, that role of saying, okay, I don't know everything. <laughs> Let's put somebody that knows this to make sure I, I'm on the right path. And a lot of the things is, is the experts like uh, Brenda here and things like that. If you're doing something right, we'll tell you you're doing something right. We're not in that business of trap correcting it. So just, just always try to have somebody look at it on the way out to make sure you're set up for the next 20 years. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on today, Gary. How can people reach you? Um, well, I'm on Facebook um, as well as uh, I have my own website um, as well as uh, my phone number is 719-424-6631 um, and my email gary.schwartz at thriving.com. So awesome. those are the quickest ways. So, yeah. Awesome. And you'll put those in the comments below so that people yeah. like, especially your email and your website so that they can get a hold of you. Um, and if they have any questions, they can reach out to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on today. I really appreciate you. If you are a veteran or you are currently serving, still serving in the military and have your own business, maybe you're even the spouse and you have your own business, I would love to have a conversation with you and see if you would be a good fit for Military Mondays. If you've found value in this, I would love for you to share it with your network and we will see you next Monday on Military Mondays. Bye everyone. Bye.